So, Islam 2, the second video about Islam, I'm uh, learning about Islam off of Wikipedia. And I was getting to the five pillars of Islam, uh, the, the creed, the Shahada, you're supposed to recite the creed, know the creed if you're Muslim. Uh, the Shahada. There's a creed in uh, Catholicism too. Uh, also in Catholicism, it's, it starts with. Um, I want to say it's the Nicene Creed. It's I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and all of the unseen and unseen. Uh, we believe in one Catholic and the Apostolic and the Apostolic Church. We believe in one God, Father, the God, the Almighty. Maker of heaven and earth, um, all the seen and unseen, we believe in, I don't know, his son, Jesus Christ. So there's a creed in Catholicism too. Prayer is uh, another pillar of Islam. Ritual prayers called shala or salat must be performed five times a day. So Muslims have to pray five times a day. Uh, salah is intended to focus the mind on God and is seen as a personal communication with him that expresses gratitude and worship. Salah is compulsory, but flexibility in the specifics is allowed depending on circumstances. The prayers are recited in the Arabic language uh, and consist of verses from the Quran. A mosque is a place of worship for Muslims who often refer to it by its Arabic name, the masjid. The word mosque is in English refers to all types of buildings dedicated to Islamic worship, although there is a distinguish in Arabic between the smaller privately owned mosque and the larger collective mosque. Although the primary purpose of the mosque is to serve as a place of prayer, it is also important to the Muslim community as a place to meet and study. Modern, modern mosque have evolved greatly from the early designs of the 7th century and contain a variety of architectural elements such as minarets. Shia Islam permits combining prayers in succession. Almsgiving. Zakrat. Or Zakat. Zakat. Or Zakah. Alms, alms giving is a, giving a fixed portion of accumulated wealth by those who can afford it to help the poor or needy and also to assist, uh, assist the spread of Islam. is considered a religious obligation as opposed to voluntary charity that the well-off owe to the needy because their wealth is seen as a trust from God's bounty. The Quran and the Hiddath also suggest a Muslim give even more as an act of voluntary alms giving. So alms giving, there's um, in Christianity, there's tithes. You're supposed to give 10% of your income to the church, uh, and also the ancient or the ancient Christians, um, some of your early Catholics would give their entire property, and they were uh, they were literally communist. Uh, they would give all their property into the church, and then the church would be the central unit to distribute the property amongst all the the followers. So, many similarities between Christianity and Islam. Uh, fasting from food and drink, among other things, must be performed from dawn to dusk during the month of Ramadan. Uh, the fast is to encourage a feeling of nearness to God. And during it, Muslims should express their gratitude for and dependence on him, atone for their past sins, and think of the needy. Uh, Shwam is not obligatory for several groups for whom it would constitute an undue burden. For others, flexibility is allowed depending on circumstances, but missed fast usually must be made up quickly. Um, the fast is a month long. Jesus fasted for a month or 40 days. Jesus had fasted for 40 days, and... Catholics don't fast for that long, but they they may have, you know, in the beginning, the more your traditional Orthodox Catholics. Um, but there's Lent. Uh, Catholicism has Lent. So you, Lent, you're supposed to give up something that you, uh, that you enjoy. So you're supposed to sacrifice, and you're not supposed to eat meat, except for fish. Fish is considered meat, you know, since they don't have any feelings, which they do. They have lots of nerve endings. But, um... Yeah, so Catholics have something similar to the fasting in Ramadan uh, called Lent. Pilgrimage, called the Hajj, during the Islamic month of Dua Hijjah in the city of Mecca, is the fifth pillar of Islam. So every able-bodied Muslim who can afford it must make the pilgrimage to Mecca at least once in his or her lifetime. Rituals of the, of the Hajj 
include walking several uh, seven times around the Kaaba, touching the black stone if possible, walking or running seven times between Mount Safa and Mount Marwa, and symbolically stoning the devil and Minna. So they got to stone the devil. <laughs> Take that devil. Um, the devil, angels, you know, God, these are all uh, in Christianity also. These are elements in Christianity. So, law and jurisprudence, the Sharia, literally the path leading to the watering place, is Islamic law formed by traditional Islamic scholarship, which most Muslim groups adhere to. In Islam, Sharia is the expression of the divine will and constitutes a system of duties that are incumbent upon a Muslim by virtue of his religious belief. Islamic law covers all aspects of life from matters of state like governance and foreign relations to issues of daily living. The Quran defines who does the punishments for five specific crimes, unlawful intercourse, false accusation of unlawful intercourse, consumption of alcohol, theft, and highway robbery. So, though not in the Quran, there are also laws against apostasy, um, although Muslims disagree over punishment. Apostasy in Islam uh, literally means relapse or regress, uh, but usually it translates to apostasy. So uh, there's apostasy in Christianity too. If you're raised uh, in the religion and you deflect from it, that's apostasy. So apostasy is commonly defined in Islam as the rejection in word or deed of one's former religion, apostasy by a person who was previously a follower of Islam. The Quran itself does not prescribe any earthly punishment for apostasy. So the Quran does not issue any punishment for apostasy. If you're a Muslim and you deflected from Islam, there is no punishment in the Quran. Islamic scholarship, however, differs on its punishment, ranging from execution so, they kill you if you're Muslim, if you're raised Muslim, and then you are not Muslim anymore. Um, that's one punishment. Based on the interpretation of certain hiddaths to no punishment at all, as long as they do not work against the Muslim society or nation. The majority of Muslim scholars hold to the traditional view that apostasy is punishable by death or imprisonment until repentance for at least adult men of sound mind. Several contemporary Muslim scholars, including influential Islamic reformers, have rejected this, arguing for religious freedom instead. According to Islamic law, apostasy is identifiable by a list of actions, such as conversion to another religion, den denying the existence of God, rejecting the prophets, mocking God or the prophets, Idol worship, rejecting the Sharia, or permitting behavior that is forbidden by the Sharia, such as adultery. So, that's apostasy in Islam, so, which is interesting. I wonder, it says most scholars believe that uh, death is the punishment for apostasy, so... The Quran and the Sunnah also contains laws of inheritance, marriage, and restitution for injuries and murder, as well as rules for fasting, charity, and prayer. However, these prescriptions and prohibitions may be broad, so their application and practice varies. Islamic scholars have elaborated systems of law on the basis of these rules and their interpretations. Over the years, there's been a changing view on Islamic law such as the Zahiri and the Jariri, have since died out. But many, oh, sorry about that, many such as those who have died out. Um, etiquette and diet. Many practices fall in the category of Adab or Islamic etiquette. This includes greeting others with As-Salamu Alaikum, peace be unto you, saying Bismillah in the name of God before meals and using only the right hand for eating and drinking. So, Bismillah comes out of Queen, Bohemian Rhapsody, Bohemian, the Czech Republic, which uh, I, I am of, you know, several other ethnicities, including African and Bavarian. So, As-Salamu Alaikum, uh, peace unto you, is also hello, As-Salamu Alaikum, Alaikum Salam. 
uh, saying Bismillah says that in the name of God, which is in the song Queen, and using only the right hand for eating and drinking, which is interesting. I guess I do. I use only my right hand. I guess maybe I use my left hand for some things. <laughs> Uh, the, the push the meat up on the fork, right? Um, so uh, you know there's similarities there between um, Christianity and Islam. More similarities. Islamic hygienic, uh, hygienic, 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 Islamic hygienic practices mainly fall into the category of personal cleanliness and health. Circumcision of male offspring is also practiced in Islam, which is interesting because I've been circumcised, and I wonder what I'm missing out on since that is body mutilization. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, mom and dad, for cutting off the tip of my dick. <laughs> I have no hood. There's no hood there. It's it's just bare. <laughs> Um, uh, I, I did hear though there's more nerve endings uh, with an uncircumcised uh, dick versus a circumcised dick. So um, I bet that uh, uncircumcised uh, 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 people, people who have uncircumcised dicks, have I guess wilder sex or feel uh, an orgasm better or more lasting or longer than uh, circumcised folks would. Still works, but then I think it personally it looks prettier. But I also heard like when it's erect, it, they they both look the same. Um, yeah, so um, that's also practiced in Islam, Christianity, and Islam. They both circumcising their their boys. Islamic burial rituals, including saying the Salat al Janaza, it's a funeral prayer over the bathed and enshrouded dead body and burying it in a grave. Same as Christianity, they throw them in the ground. Muslims are restricted in their diet. Prohibited foods include pork products, blood, carry-on, and alcohol. All meat must come from herbivorous animals slaughtered in the name of God by a Muslim, Jew, or Christian, with the exception of game that one has hunted or fished for oneself. Food permissible for Muslim is known as halal food. All meat must come from a herbivorous animal, so that's they don't. I guess they don't eat pork because I guess pigs uh, they they eat um, other animals. They can they've been known to actually eat each other. Um, so prohibited, yeah, and pork products, and blood, carry on, and alcohol. So you can't I guess have you have to cook the meat all the way through. You no no medium well. It's got to be well done or or that's that's all she wrote. Family life. The basic unit of Islamic society is the family, and Islam defines the obligations and the legal rights of the family members. The father is seen as financially responsible for his family and is obliged to cater for their well-being. The division of inheritance is specified in the Quran, which states that most of it is to pass to the immediate family, while a portion is set aside for the payment of debts and the making of bequests. With some exceptions, a woman's share of inheritance is generally half of that of a man with the same rights of secession. Marriage in Islam is a civil contract which consists of an offer and acceptance between two qualified presence in the uh, parties in the presence of two witnesses. An offer and an acceptance. The groom is required to pay a bridal gift to the bride as stipulated in the contract. A man may have up to four wives if he believes that he could treat them equally, while a woman may have only one husband. In most Muslim countries, the pro process of divorce in Islam is known as talaq, talaq, which the husband initiates by pronouncing the word divorce. Scholars disagree whether Islamic holy texts justify traditional Islamic practices such as veiling and seclusion. Starting in the 20th century, Muslim social reformers argued against these and other practices such as polygamy in Islam with varying success. At the same time, many Muslim women have attempted to reconcile tradition with modern narrative by combining an active life with outward modesty. Certain Islamist groups, such as the like the Taliban, have sought to continue traditional law as applied to women. Um, that's more more Islam, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do some more Islam coming up. So.
Islam 2, 3 coming up. <laughs> yeah, peace. Occupied.